Hi, my name is Danny Fleming of MA Properties Real Estate. Today's topic is how risky are inspections? Well, how risky are inspections? How long is a piece of string? Um, so it depends, part of it depends on the buyer's agent, how experienced they are. Um, it's obviously, well, first off, I should qualify. An inspection, uh, an offer with an inspection versus an offer without an inspection, go with the one without the inspection. Absolutely 100%, you know, if the, if the other terms and conditions are equal, go with the one without the inspection. It, to be honest, it doesn't matter how well maintained your home is or how not well maintained your home is. It's all about the buyers. Um, it depends on whether your home is a first time home buyer price point. Um, it depends on whether your home, uh, the buyers are reasonable. It depends on whether their buyer's agent is an experienced buyer's agent who's giving the buyers good advice. It depends on whether the buyers bought the home with competing offers and paid way more than they were expecting. There's so many different factors as to what constitutes, um, you know, what makes up the, the risk factors. If, if you've got an inexperienced buyer's agent, sometimes they don't give their buyers valuable guidance. Um, an inspection is not meant to just identify every single thing wrong with the home and the buyers ask for every single thing found in the inspection. An inspection is really where the inspector comes in and what is the inspector finding about the home that wasn't immediately visible to a buyer. You know, putting that the driveway is cracked and and wanting money back from the sellers because the driveway is cracked. Well, you know, as a buyer, when you walk down the driveway to go into the house, you would have noticed the driveway was cracked. So it's not for immediately visible type issues. It's really to identify the things that you, as an educated buyer, wouldn't have been able to easily identify um, when you were walking through the home. It Part of that is also how experienced, again, you know, how experienced is the buyer's agent. A reasonable response to an inspection will get far more traction and far more attention from the seller and willingness to do something and work with the buyers than the whole laundry list that the inspector found. When a response to an inspection comes in with a whole big laundry list of everything found in the home and the buyer saying we want you to fix it all the sellers are going to look at that and think they're not buying a new home they're being unreasonable about this we're not going to do anything no tell them we're not going to do anything they're going to take the house or, or, or you know take it or leave it whereas if there's 20 things you know and, and from item number six down are pretty minor it's, it's worth the buyers being reasonable and saying, well, those top three issues, I'd really like the seller to, to help us fix those. We can take care of those other things after we bought and buy the home. The home's not a new home. It's a, it's, it's a home that's been lived in for, for many years. So if they come back to the, the seller with a list of three things that they'd like the seller to take care of, but all the way, oh, by the way, Mr. Seller, we found, the inspector found all of these other things as well, but we'll take care of them after closing. The seller thinks these people are being reasonable. Yeah, we'll do those. We'll do those. Um, we, we'll fix those. So it, it's, you know, there's different techniques of how, the buyers um, are responding to an inspection as to whether it will go well or not. Um, 
if the buyers have paid way more than asking price and they believe they've overpaid for the home, then they're going to try and negotiate the price down. Mm. You know, that was a technique that was being used a few years ago and it still occasionally is in play, again, depending on the agent and the advice that the, the, the sellers, uh, sorry, that the buyers are getting. Again, asking for an unreasonable amount to be credited to the buyers at closing is just, it, it, it's not constructive. Um, there's also, I'm just trying to remember what were the other components I mentioned. Um, <laughs> buyers changing their mind, that's a biggie. Nothing we can do about that. Your home can be pristine and nothing wrong with the home or it can be a bit of a mess. If the buyers change their mind about your home, they're changing their mind. Doesn't matter what they come back with, they've just changed their mind and they want to exit the contract. So there's a whole lot of, um, and the inspection really is another opportunity for the buyers to renegotiate the price um, from what they um, originally negotiated. To, to buy the home for. So when we talk about how risky are inspections, the risk is associated with the home coming back on the market. Because when a home comes back on the market again, we're not going to get you the same price for the home. We're, we're just not. Because the buyers see, the other buyers out there have seen, oh, the home went under agreement. It must have been an inspection because it's come back on the market eight days later, hmm, I wonder what was wrong with the home. I wonder what was wrong with the home. Another risk with um, associated with inspections is if your listing agent attends the inspection. I, I am staggered at how many supposedly experienced listing agents attend the inspection when the buyer and the buyer's agent and the inspector are there. That is one of the worst things a listing agent can do when representing a seller. Because a listing agent is legally, by law, required to disclose any material defect, any, any, any issue with the home that would materially impact a further by a future buyer's decision to buy the home if they know about it. If the listing agent is at the inspection, they're hearing about issues from a licensed inspector and uh, someone who is author authorized, who is professionally licensed, that knows this stuff. So if they hear information about your home at the inspection and the buyers exit the contract, Guess what? They have to tell future buyers about this legally, legally. So, and that's a bad thing. <laughs> that's a bad thing. Um, and, and as a seller, if a buyer is negotiating on the inspection, you know, and you've done a seller's disclosure beforehand and the buyer's negotiating on this, on the inspection, don't ask for the, for the inspection report because whatever you find in the inspection report, you need to update your seller's disclosure because you now know about it. You have to, you have to disclose it if the buyer exits the contract. So there's all of these facets associated with an inspection that makes them quite risky to have. So one technique, I mean, one technique a technique, the best technique for getting the highest price and for getting great terms on offers, and great terms means no inspection, um, is to price realistically. If you price realistically, we tend to find that if we have about four or more offers on a home, probably 50% of those offers have come in with no inspection contingency because the buyer may have done a pre-inspection prior to writing an offer because they want you to take their offer. So not having an inspection makes their offer attractive. So that's one technique of avoiding inspections because inspections really are risky. 
anyway, there's a whole lot more to talk about this. I think I've covered the, the main ones. Um, look, if you can think of one that I didn't cover, please contact me and let me know and, and, uh, and I'll fill you in on it. Um, here's my contact info and hope you have a great day. Bye. Thank you.